Hello, welcome to this video abstract of the review article titled Tinnitus at a crossroad between phantom perception and sleep, published in Brain Communications. My name is Linus Wilenski and I'm first author of the article. In this work, we bring together recent developments in the fields of tinnitus and sleep research and in conclusion, propose a new perspective on the interaction between auditory phantom percepts and natural brain state dynamics. Subjective tinnitus is the perception of a constant phantom sound generated by the brain. Often this comes in form of a persistent ringing or hissing percept. To give you an impression, here's a brief audio clip of what tinnitus can sound like. Please be aware that the audio clip may be unpleasant or triggering for people who have tinnitus. Tinnitus affects about 15% of the world population and can be a debilitating condition that is associated with sleep problems, depression and anxiety. While the cause of tinnitus is not always known in individual cases, the most common triggers are considered to be intense noise exposure, such as in a live music concert or any form of hearing loss. Most often tinnitus is associated with some form of hyperexcitability or spontaneous hyperactivity in multiple brain regions. And while the auditory system is often strongly involved in producing this aberrant activity, we know now that actually many brain areas show altered activity in tinnitus. This image on the left shows only a subset of regions affected. It has been suggested that it is this global representation of tinnitus in the brain that makes it such a salient percept and debilitating condition. However, there's another situation where the brain shows rather widespread alteration of spontaneous activity, and this is during sleep. In particular during non-REM sleep, the state we spend most time in while we are sleeping, the brain produces this very stereotypical, slow, oscillating activity that spreads across the cortex. Importantly, this slow wave activity is present across many regions involved in tinnitus. The spatial overlap between tinnitus activity and sleep oscillatory activity has important implications. First, it could explain why interrupted sleep is such a common symptom in tinnitus patients. While normal brain is able to express widespread sleep-like activity, a tinnitus brain might show these persistent hotspots of aberrant activity. The intense interconnectivity of the cortex could then lead to a widespread effect of this hotspot on brain-wide activity and also to an interference with sleep in a substantial manner. On the other hand, if the sleep drive is very high, for example after a period of extended wakefulness, there is evidence to suggest that aberrant activity could be to a degree suppressed. In other words, it is possible that there is a dynamic interaction between the expression of non-REM slow wave activity and tinnitus-related activity in the brain. Specifically, tinnitus activity might be reduced during intense non-REM sleep, but as sleep pressure decreases, and with it the drive of the brain to express slow wave activity, aberrant brain activity could regain its potential to affect the brain on a wide scale, as observed during wakefulness in tinnitus patients. In this review, we describe the mechanisms underlying such a putative interaction between sleep and tinnitus related activity, based on brain activity on the level of single neurons up to that of the whole brain. Finally, the spatial overlap between brain regions where activity is modulated by sleep and by tinnitus might have an additional implication. It is now widely appreciated that the formation of persistent tinnitus requires plasticity in central brain regions and some of the plasticity processes thought to be underlying tinnitus formation are known to be consolidated during sleep. In this review, we are describing how sleep could be connected to long-term tinnitus formation and development. We hope that this new perspective on sleep and tinnitus will stimulate discussions on harnessing natural variations in brain state to understand phantom percepts generated by equally spontaneous activities. We describe how bringing together sleep and tinnitus research could lead to a new target for understanding tinnitus and for developing treatments based on known methods of sleep manipulation. With that, I want to thank my co-authors and the funding bodies that supported this work, in particular the Royal National Institute for Deaf People. Thank you for your attention and for your interest in our work.